Hello everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope you're all having a great day. It's kind of stormy here today, but it's fine. Our lake is so full, I can't even believe it. Usually this time of year, it is so low, but it is quite full because of our thunderstorms in the afternoons. Um, I wanted to come on today because as I've been packing to move out of my craft room, I realized that I have a lot of um, kits. I'm on two design teams, as a lot of you know, and um, I have been doing some projects for other de uh, guest design team projects. Um, well, one guest design team project for Natalie. And um, so I will typically cut out all the ephemera for the kit, and, you know, put it in file folders and then put them, put everything in like um, snap bags. And, um, and then as I work on them, I will put them in, in different, you know, things, which I will show you in a moment. But what I wanted to show you today was a couple of my ephemera books that I've already put together and then show you one that I am currently going to put together. I'll put it together today on video, but I won't decorate it today. Perhaps, um, in the next video we'll decorate it. But um, this particular one was made out of um, cardstock and all, I'm sorry, chipboard. And all I did was I had taken this um, image from the graphic fairies and I coated it with some um, paper gloss. And I put this little, um, you know, doily on it, just, you know, and it says ephemera collections on it. And then this one I keep primarily, you know, little girls this is all florals more florals some bows um you know and it goes on and so um these are great i still have all these pages left to still put more tracing paper on and as you can see this is about two years old and this is done with tracing paper and the tracing paper is fine. Nothing's falling out. No tracing paper is coming loose. I put it on with Fabri-Tac. And, um, you know, there's no sewing needed. Nothing. These are so simple and so inexpensive. Now, this one I made with an old Reader's Digest. And seriously, all I did was I deconstructed it by taking the paper out. And then I put a piece of... Um, as you can see here, I all I had to do was put a piece of linen in. The, the spine was in very good shape, so all I had to do was put a piece of linen in here, and then I covered the inside with the these two papers as the inside um, was just, it, when I had taken it apart, it kind of peeled off the paper. So I did decorate that. This one I had made with cardstock because it was the first one I made, and um, I used vellum, but um, I found, I mean, the vellum sticks, no problem with the Fabri-Tac. As you can see, nothing has ever come loose. Um, you know, it's been fine. But I switched to, uh, with the other one, I switched to file folder because it's less expensive. And tracing paper, you know, the heavyweight tracing paper, is that's less expensive. So I have a great, you know, two great ephemera books. Well, I have many, but I just brought out these two. <laughs> so then um, I wanted to show you a couple of other things you can do. If you're working on a project, like this was several years ago, I was working on a project. Um, it was bee themed. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Or no, it could have been. Yeah, it was bee themed. And so what I did was I kind of put my own together and um, sewed in the signatures, you know, put this little pocket in for my little things made out of a, a, an envelope so I could put, you know, my little pieces in there. And this is what I consider a project, um, you know, ephemera holder. So when I was done making, you know, when I was complete, when I completed the journal, I still kept this because I can still use it. Now this flaps open on purpose, it's not glued. But as you can see, I put it like this so things can still stay in here. And I had, um, I, I'm pretty sure like postcards and things back here and in here, I'm pretty sure I had sentiments. 
and then um, of course I kept it because I can use it for other things even though it has the be kind on it and what have you I can still use it you know so this is another idea and then another idea is what I'm currently working on for a project for Raindrop Lila this will actually go in the journal and all it is is um, these are five by seven that I printed on cardstock and I double sided I know I didn't double side it. I actually did, um, I glued this to this page. And then in here, I just kind of made the pockets out of paper. So there's like all my ephemera so far that I've cut out for this particular project that I'm working on, which will actually be part of this I won't be using. I'll actually put it in the journal for the person who gets the journal. And there'll also be another um, tracing paper pocket here so that, you know, I can fit other things in there, you know, bigger things and what have you. And it will close up like this. I haven't decided on the closure yet. Likely a ribbon closure or something. And that very flat, oh, back here, I put a little picture and then a few little tags, some birds that can be fussy cut for the person who you know, receives the journal. So that's another option. Um, if you have, you know, tiny bits and pieces and you want to, you know, put them in a journal for a person who receives the journal for something to add to their journal and, and personalize it um, for them, you know. So I just, yeah, so I just started that. And um, like I said, I still have to finish this and it will close up like this instead of like this, or, you know, it can go in the journal any, either way, but this is how I plan on putting it in the journal because it's gonna go inside a pocket and then you'll pull it out and then the person will have all these little things that come from this particular kit, which is called Margaret, by the way. And um, they'll have all these bits and pieces that they can play with and use, you know, to personalize their pages and their ephemera. So that's another idea. And then another idea, which I have not started this one yet, but get an inexpensive notebook. And then you can just leave the pages just like this. And then you can put your, you know, your tracing paper on however, whatever size you want. And then um, you could glue, if these pages aren't real sturdy, you could glue two pages or three pages. This just got opened. I haven't really even turned the pages yet. So, um, what's great about these is they really don't need to be decorated or anything like that. And you could deconstruct it by just taking out a few pages and use these in journals, um, or for ephemera or whatever, just coffee stain them or, you know, whatever as it fills up. So that's another idea. And then another idea is, and I have several of these. You can get them, you know, at the paint store or what have you. These are perfect because what you do is you simply cover each part, you know, measure it out and cover each section as you want them, okay? And then um, it closes up like this. So this would be your cover. You'd open it up and here you would have some pockets. Here you'd have some pockets. And then you'd open it up again here and here, and then here and there. I like these for um, labels, butterflies, flowers, um, you know, stamps, you know, all kinds of things like that. And then you can label it on the front, um, say, Raindrop Lila Tags or Roxy Creation um, Stamps. You know, things like that, you know, whatever designer you're using or what have you. And then you have it, you know. And then once I am in the middle, the very, you know, almost towards the end of the project, everything goes in something like this or one of my 12 by 12 project boxes. I'm finding these are very nice because as you can see, they can stand right up on my shelf and I know what's in them. So for example, you open it up and in here, I have all the bits and pieces that I'm using for this particular journal, including all of my scraps and my fussy cuts. 
that I haven't used yet. Okay, so that's that. And then in here I have washi tape and, um, you know, sentiments and ephemera that I've made, um, that I'm making. Okay, so then that simply slides in. Nope, sorry. That slides in here in the back where I've already made my cover for the journal, which is all fabric. I, I um, printed on fabric for this one and lined it with linen. So that's my cover. And then this simply slides, this goes in here. And then at the very, very back is where I slide these because I'm still working with these. Okay, these are pieces I'm still working with and they fit fine. Here is my, um, all my papers I'm still working with. Okay, in here, oops, that bag doesn't belong in there. In here are already a couple of things I've made for this project. This is a mini journal and this is like, I think five by seven. And this is all fabric. This is a pretty much all fabric journal except for some of the pages, okay? So this is done, and then that little one's done, and then my signature is right here. I just need to add, you know, some more of the tea stained and, and um, avocado stained paper, and then I can put it all together. So I'm almost done with this one. It's been a work in progress, but I'm almost done. I'm putting these back here because these are the things I'm still working with. These are just a few more papers I might like to add um, as pages to my journal. And then I hope I'm in frame. And then, like I said, items I've already made and completed. And then in here is um, my, my two signatures. There's actually two in there. Okay, so once you get to this point, you can either use something like this, which these are very inexpensive. You can get them anywhere. And um, yeah, so then it stands up nicely on your shelf like this and you can just pull it out when you need to work on it. You can just pull it out when you need to work on it. I think I went out of frame. Okay, so this is kind of where I go once my project is almost completed. So that's it. So I'll show you the one that I am creating today and decided I better turn on the camera so that I can give you an idea. I need something that will hold an entire kit. The kit I'm currently working on um, is called Margaret and it is um, by Raindrop Lila and it is huge. It is a 33 or 36 page um, uh, Kit. <laughs> kits and so right now I mean this isn't all the things that I'm fussy cutting but a lot that I still need to fussy cut and I need some place to put this kit because like I said it's 33 pages and these are just some of what I've printed so far that I need a place to put where it's such a large kit I wanted to include the papers um, as well. So what I've done is I, I chose, um, you know, an old book that I had, I deconstructed it and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to do it on camera. I know that this book will hold my eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. And I also know, obviously it will hold some, only some of the ephemera that, um, I want to keep. Even if I don't use it in this particular journal, this journal, this kit goes with everything that she has in her shop. There's just nothing that would not go with this kit. And that's why I chose Margaret as my kit to do for my design team project. So uh, let me just have a drink of water really quick because I can feel my <clears throat> throat getting very scratchy. Hold on one moment, please. 
And honestly, guys, I really mean it. I do not at all um, use, I have never, ever, ever, ever had a problem using Fabrichac with um, either acetate or um, vellum or tracing paper, never. I mean, once in a great while, if I'm really tugging things in or if I stuff things in too much, they, um, you know, they may come apart a little bit, but I'll just take some more fabric jack and put it in there and it's fine. So, and there are other things you can use for sure, but they take a long time to dry. And I'll give you an example in my next video. So, I've deconstructed my book. Let me get everything aside. I'm not going to give you any measurements because your books are different. However, the one thing I will tell you is that where your spine is, I, I tried so hard to deconstruct this and keep all everything blue, but it didn't work. So, I'll be decorating it anyway. And this is just an old decorating book. Uh, by Laura Ashley, actually, so you know how old it is. Yeah, Laura Ashley Color. I've saved all the pages, obviously, but um, uh, they're very vintage. They're awesome. So um, anyway, what I do is I make sure, like, this spine is basically just like a piece of cardboard. Yeah. Excuse me, you know. So what I've done is I've cut some pieces of file folder, several. This is doubled. So what I'm going to do is simply take my Fabri-Jac. You could use anything, but I'm using Fabri-Jac, my frame. So I'm going to, oh, I just took the whole cover off. No, don't want to do that. Let's put this aside. Oh my goodness. I'm really thankful for the rain, but hopefully ugh, I keep doing that. I keep taking the whole cover off. Ugh. There we go. So I'm just going to go in here. And these, I just love my little ones. Um, and I'm even going to be making smaller ones. I know Rach from, uh, Rachel from Roxy Creations is currently making some with smaller books to have on her desk as well. Um, but I've been making these for about two years because I used to keep everything in like, um, and I still do, uh, photo albums. So they're a great resource as well. And notebooks, uh, three ring notebooks are fabulous. But I didn't want to bring out all of my ephemera books. I wanted to show you the ones that are easily made, easily accessible. You know, you could get these at any. Um, I'm putting a lot of glue in there because I don't want that spine to. There we go. So now I'm going to take, these are a little bit wider than this one because it's just a little bit wider inside there. And I want it to still be able to close. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do is put this inside here. And this is an inch wide because, whoops, this is an inch wide because uh, these are an inch wide because that's how wide the spine is without it compromising it to be able to still fold. So you still want that to happen. Let me get my bone folder and get that glue down. It's not drying as fast as it should. I think it's because of the humidity. Even though the air conditioning's on, it's still, um, you know, humid out. So I, I'm finding that my glue is taking longer to dry. So just press that down. Make sure you've got a good press in there. Okay? So that's all you do. And then we're going to take some more. And I'm also going to put one together for a lot of Tina's kits. I have so many of her labels still, um, you know, in there 
eight and a half by 11 that still haven't been cut up. And I thought, you know, I need to start, what I really need to start doing is, as you saw in my other um, ephemera books, what I am trying to achieve is, for example, this one will be contain only raindrop lila. And then I'll make another one that will contain Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. And another will contain my Rachel from Roxy Creations. You know, the ones that I use the most and the ones that need, that have been sitting in my filing cabinet needing my attention, you know? They're saying, please cut us up and use us. <laughs> but I forget about them because they're in my filing cabinet. And they're not doing me any good in there. So, I, you know, having to pack up and move my craft room out again, <laughs> it's not a bad thing at all. It's funny how that works out. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You know what? I need to put things together. So, and this will sit on my shelf with the rest of my ephemera books labeled. And then, you know, I can just pull it and use it when I'm creating anything for my design team. And the same thing with Angela from um, I just lost it. That's weird. <laughs> Angela Kerr <Card> Designs. <laughs> Oh dear. So this one is shorter, okay? This one's a half inch, and I'm going to put that there because as I built it up, I didn't want to, I'll show you, because I'm gonna put a piece of tape, masking tape over this, and then I'm gonna put a piece of linen, or you can use anything you have. I just happen to have some linen, and it's very lightweight, so I, I definitely needed to use this. My heavier weight um, hemp and things like that that I've gotten from Rachel at Roxy Creations was too short. So I just pulled a piece of linen that I had. And you can use, you know, a sheet. You could use, um, you could use nothing. You don't have to put any fabric. You know, you could use any kind of fabric that you have. I like using the fabric. I think it gives it a little bit of extra, oops extra stability and it looks pretty so now what I'm going to do is since I've got my spine built up as much as I want it and as much as I need it so that my book still will close I'm going in here and I do have my towel with my um, hand sanitizer right next to me on my chair I have so many videos that I want to do, and I am so hoping that I can get them done to give you some more great ideas. I have some on um, wax, you know, how to make a, a really good wax seal. I have some envelopes that I want to show you how to make, very unique. Um, some paper bag items I want to show you. So, yeah. I'm hoping that I won't be gone too long from my videos. Like I said, I, I can only put up so many. And I am working on this one live. Not live, but it is Saturday. I'm going to try very hard to do another one today to put up tomorrow. The decorating part. So there you go. Now let me find that little piece of cloth that I had. Just right here, I hope. Yeah. So I just have this. But before I do that, I'm just going to take a piece of masking tape. Oh, I want to push these over. I'm trying to get that so that it's not really in my... Actually, I think I'm going to cut it off. I don't want to get it in... I don't want to impede that spine from closing. So I'll just cut that off. The rest, I think, is fine. Let me just wipe my fingers. The decorating part is 
you know, fun. It's fun to decorate it. I'll also be doing a video on my design team project, my guest design team project for um, uh, <laughs> um, the celebration, the uh, magical fairy tea party. Uh, magical tea party, magical fairy tea party for Raindrop Lila. I will be videoing that before I finish, before the contractors come. And we have put that off. The contractors won't be here until Wednesday, um, which is great because it gives me a little bit more time. My husband is very supportive in, you know, my my crafting and my videoing and stuff. So he called the contractor and the contractor was absolutely fantastic with that. Like, whenever you're ready. And I didn't want to put it off too long because, you know, I do see some mildew. Not, it's not mold, it's mildew. I think I called it mold the other day. It's not mold, it's just mildew. And we may have to have some of the flooring replaced, which is no big deal. We actually had extra in the garage. So, you know, that worked out really well. If we do, I don't know. My husband thinks that we should, uh, just to be safe, because we do see a few little buckles in the floor where we have already taken out one of the um, bookcases. So, that wall is clear. They're going to take out five feet up and all the way across uh, the wall, which is, I think my husband said 11 feet, 10 feet. 11 by 10, it's 11 feet. It's gonna come all the way across my desk, especially where the window is. Because when the hurricane came, the water actually went between the foundation and the walls. This was really strange. I mean, we do have a lake out back and the water did rise all the way to the patio, so. And it was moving like the tide, <laughs> so. We were very fortunate. I mean, there are people who in this, and, and we live in a very new community. We have very, very um, strict, and um, I'm just gonna cut this a little bit here. Um, we have very strict um, building code here uh, because it, the house is only two years old. So we are very up to date with the building codes. And because of the tornadoes that were involved, people's roofs lifted right off. Um, our garage door was pushed in. I mean, it was crazy, but we didn't, we didn't even lose a shingle crazy. But then the people on both sides of us had severe roof damage. So you just, you know, these hurricanes, you just never know. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting this here. And I don't, I don't mind if it shows through the linen because you're not really going to see it. But it's just giving it a little bit more and you could use um, anything for this. You know, if you feel more comfortable, we're just using it for a file folder. It's not gonna be very heavy. And I really, like I said, I chose this one so that I can hold all of the papers for Margaret, the kit that I'll be using for years. <laughs> so. This actually may be part of my design team project for June. So, just cutting down here. I know you can't see it, but I'm just making sure that I'm kind of even and Steven here. Okay, and if you don't have masking tape, you could use washi tape, just glue it down. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of the Fab Shack on this side just to make sure it's down there good. And 
And like I said, I don't mind if it seeps through. Because like I said, it's you're really not gonna mind. I could even put another piece over that if it if it shows or what have you. All right, so there you go. I am going to pray that this is dry enough for me to put the signatures in. Let me just get this down. Where are we in time? 30? Okay, good. This should only take a few more minutes to show you how I do the signatures. Hold on a moment. I just got some new thread. So I'm going to use that. signatures so yes I got some new wax thread in different colors and I'm really loving it this one is navy I thought oh perfect I don't know what I'm going to cover the you know the outside with but I thought you know this would look really nice so that's what I'm going to be using and I'm glad I'm on camera because I'd be going through that bag all day trying to decide well wait a minute should I use a different color but, you know, <laughs> you know how I am. When I'm on camera, it's just choose it. So now I'm just going to kind of neaten up this edge here. I'm just kneading up the edge in case you can't see me in camera. I'm just tidying it up. I should be going from the other side so I can see it better. And I've really reinforced that spine now. This is a great book. I can't wait to show you some of the pages. I was going to deconstruct it and all. I'm sorry. I think I just hit you. I am so sorry about that. There we go. I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't scare anybody. It is kind of a big book to be working in, but. So, like I said, it will fit my, my paper. It will fit all my fussy cuts. It will fit this, this entire 33 or 36 page um, kit. Which is fabulous to have it all in one spot, you know, as opposed to having, you know, in several others. And that doesn't mean I can't pull from those smaller books, you know flowers or pictures or you know little items that I have in those and these it doesn't necessarily mean that I can't go in here and grab some of my stickers or you know some of the thing more stickers things that I've already fussy cut it doesn't mean I can't go in here still and you know go through here and say okay let me get some flowers or some little girls or add you know, some stamps, you know, I can still do that, but I still want this to be my entire Margaret by Raindrop Lila um, kit. Highly recommend you take a look at that kit. Oh, and while I'm on video, um, I know that she has her, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's, um, I printed that too. <laughs> it's her 4th of July kit, and I don't remember the name of it, but you'll see it. She, I just noticed today that she had that on sale. And that is a beautiful kit. I've, I, I have, I've already made something with that kit. Not as a design team project, just as something to use, um, you know, in the future, because I just couldn't resist. So there we go. Now it closes fine, as you can see. I did not, you know, didn't compromise my spine. It's a little bit more sturdy, as you could see. And the, at the very beginning, it was flip flopping all over the place, and now it just all matches up 
really nicely. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take a regular file folder and I have measured it and cut it to size, which only took a tiny sliver off the top. So I just put my file folder in here like this, right? And then I just um, took the book like this. I saw where I needed the overhang. I opened it back up and then I just drew a pencil line and then I just ran it through my, you know, my cutter. So I knew that all of the pages would, you know, my pages that I'm gonna put in will fit. So now all I'm going to do is take each page like so. I'm going to tie some signatures in my first page and then I'll do the rest off camera because you get the point. I'm just going to put in as many. I'll probably put in, I think I cut four. I think four is plenty for this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. And then I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do something different. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a snap bag here for my papers and a snap bag here for my papers and just clip them at the top with say, you know, um, oops, sorry. I was reaching for a clip. Something larger than this, but for example, I'll clip the two snap bags that I keep my eight and a half by 11 paper in on this side and on this side, okay? But actually, oh no, I will have to cover that, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just simply going to take it, I'm gonna open it up, my file folder. I don't mind that. And you can even decorate, you know, this if you want, which I likely will, because I like things to be pretty. Or I might not. I might just use, you know, the papers from the, you know, the kit or, you know, what have you, tracing paper, um, maybe some vellum. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm getting to this point. So this is what the main part was to show you today. So now all I'm going to do is simply take my thread and my needle I always keep my needle on a ribbon so I don't lose it. <laughs> and I think, let me see if I need my awl or not. And you can get a whole kit on um, Amazon that comes with an awl. And um, what is my awl? I know I just used it. Here it is. Um, it comes with the awl. It comes with thread. You know, your wax linen thread. It comes with scissors. It comes with clips. These. Clips to hold in your, you know, what you're doing, which I'll use. Or you could use large paper clips. But I'll use those because I'm working with the book. Okay. So now, oh, it comes with a thimble. In case you need it. Which I haven't had to use yet. If I ever have to use that, I, I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> so let me thread my needle. And I want to do the same thing. I want to do one. Two. Three. And I'm going to do four because I think I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I think I'm going to do four holes in this one as opposed to the three. Okay. Only because it's a larger book. I've never done four. Maybe I should do five. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm just going to thread my needle. Wow, I've never worked with this much stuff before. Okay. So 
Now I'm going to place it in there and I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not even measuring. You don't need to. Well, if unless you want to, I can see. Let me just put this glue away because I don't need it anymore. With these kinds of things, you can definitely eyeball because, you know, you've measured it. You know where you want to place it. You know where it's going to close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to poke some holes right in the middle of my file folder. So I'm going to go, I want this to last forever. So one, yes I am, two, three, I'm going to do five, four, five. I'm going to start with, yeah, I'm going to start with this one because this will be my middle one. I've never done a five stitch before, so you might want to go online and find somebody who's more experienced at doing five holes. I'm just doing what I think will work because I've done three holes before. So there's one. Go around here and see if I can find my hole here. Match it. Oh, you know what? Maybe if I clip it, it will stay exactly where I need it. I can get rid of my thumb here. Okay, that'll be easier. So there's the first hole. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I want to go all the way up here. So all the way to the top. I hope I'm in frame. I'm going all the way to the top. And you could use cardstock, but like I said, the file folder, I have so many of them. And they work really well. And I like to save people mind or give suggestions you could use whatever you want so now I'm gonna go hmm I guess I'll go all the way to the top like I do a three pamphlet I'm sorry folks I know I'm flip-flopping here and it's hard to see let me put a clip on this end too Keep everything even. This is really not easy to do on film. <laughs> but, you know me, I'm going to try it. So I'm just now taking this. I'm going all the way down. Here's my where I'm gonna tie it. I'm going to like pretend I'm doing a three pamphlet. I don't know if this is how you do a five. I'm just doing it. <laughs> I should have probably researched, I guess. <laughs> but who has time for that? <laughs> Sorry, I don't. <laughs> I kind of just wing a lot of things, as you know. <laughs> okay, there we go. And then I am going to come up through that, this one here, where I made my fourth, making sure, hold on, making sure I go through my hole. Where did I punch that hole? There it is. Yay, perfect. So I'm gonna go through here. And then, Hmm. Maybe I should have just done four. 
Oh no, I know, I know. Here we go. Down here. There's four. Okay. And then come back up through your middle, which is here. And I do recommend a strong thread or ribbon because you're going to be in and out of this for, if you want it to last forever, then you're going to be in and out forever. And you can change it up. I mean, if you decide that perhaps you wanted, and I won't cut that thread because I can use it in my next signature, but perhaps you want you know, in a year or so, you want to change it out to, you know, a different collection, then you still have the opportunity to do that. So, I'm pulling it tight. Okay, I've got a piece of thread on each side, like so. See? And then, I'm just going to tie a knot. I think that five pamphlet stitch worked well. <laughs> and I'm glad that I did it and not the three because it is a long book and I'm just going to tie a knot I might tie two knots so there's one and two so let's see how that worked and it worked Perfectly. So now I have my first page of my my ephemera slash paper. Like I said, it's a large project. I mean, a large kit. I want to keep it all together. You could use it for any kit, any kit. Your own private collections. You could use it for your antique papers. You could use it for your, you know, all your antique envelopes and papers. I plan on doing the same with those because I've got them all in plastic. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't, I don't know. So there we go. That's all we had to do. And I'll put the other signatures in off camera because you don't need to see each one. So what I'll do next is I'll put the next one in and the next one in, and the next one in until I have all four. And then I will come back tomorrow and we will decorate it. And I will, um, maybe what I'll do too is I will, if I have time, um, I will print some papers and, well, I have lots of printed papers, um, but I will, you know, we'll decorate it um, or you could just leave it the way that it is, which I might do. I don't know. I mean, the outside cover is really nice. So I may just decorate the inside and some of the pages. Um, I did not do that to the others. I just left it the white card stock and then the, you know, the file folder. Um, but we'll see. Okay. So those are my little suggestions today for how to keep your ephemera and like I said this will be nice because it will sit right on my bookshelf like this and I'll have it I won't do it probably here on the spine because I really like it so down here it will say um, I'll put you know I'll type out um, something that will say raindrop Lila Margaret and then everything in here will be my Margaret kit okay so I hope that you enjoyed that and um, I certainly did and um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I am reading your comments. Thank you so much, everybody, for your wonderful comments regarding Tina. I will be working on that as well here and there. Um, like I said, I'm trying very hard to stay focused and, yeah, pack. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So, until next time, be well, be kind, and God bless. Love y'all. Bye-bye.